what Bill Hardesty had. So he uh, led Laurie, Laurie Jury across the start line ahead by, um, what, uh, boat length or two. And uh, Laurie Jury just started in his cast, worked his way to windward, and then just steamrolled over the top. So it was almost like one of them was in a Tom 28 and the other was in a Tom 29. So uh, Jury still in front, and he's going to retain the inside um, for the rounding. So... Um, if um, Hardesty still has a boat speed issue on this beat, um, it'll it'll become very apparent very quick. Well, not a very good rounding there. Uh, Laurie Jury a little late with a jib trim. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it uh, looked to us like Bill did a very nice rounding. This race is not over yet for sure. I mean, uh, Bill has got his own side of the course right now, and he's got good speed, so... From now on, who picked up the best, sh best shift to go back, and, and the next cross is going to be really interesting. Uh, so, Nikolai, again, we Scotty may not be able to uh, to say this because he's in a powerboat, um, but you were out there sailing earlier today. In this condition, are there any shifts to use? I mean, is, is there? It looks to us like it's pretty steady, but is there anything out there? The wind is really steady, but of course, it's always a small shift. But the most important thing right now is the boat speed. Um, and they're going back now to, to get me, get the cross. And for me, it looks like Laura Dewey still has got a good lead here. He's got a good speed out there, and he seems like he got a really good angle going back to the mark. So so would your uh, strategy, if you were behind, would be to keep it close with the leader? Or do you split and uh, try to find something? It depends. I mean, if I were Bill, I'd probably keep it close right now because it seems like Bill's got a really good boat speed in this win. But if, if the speed is really even, I, I'll try to separate a bit with the leading boat so I can take my chances and get away from him. So Bill is going uh, for another attack now to get away from Laura Dewey, and uh, he's probably going a bit further this time to get his own way and see if he can pick up a really good shift to get back in the game. Uh, S Scotty Dixon, you're out there. Uh, how close was it at that cross when uh, Hardesty tack away? Did he gain anything from that bottom arc rounding? Uh, I'm not sure if he gained anything, Dobbs, but he certainly didn't lose anything. Uh, he was pretty close to the bottom arc rounding from what I saw. And um, certainly that last cross was uh, about a boat length, maybe a little less. Um, the next one coming up now, so um, Hardesty, uh, whatever was going on on the first beat, it seems like he's back in the groove. And uh, he'll be testing Laurie Jury. Here comes the next cross. And uh, Laurie Jury tacking in front. Not a whole lot in it, about a boat length, Dobbs. Well, thanks very, very much for that, uh, Scotty. We've been speculating whether there's anything better on the right or left side of the course, but it just seems dead even. Yeah, it seems like both sides are doing really well, and the speed is really good for both sides. So uh, I think it's going to have a tight rounding at the next top mark. I think Laurie Dewey is going to lead around it. It seems like he's still got the right side with good speed, and Bill is not able to cross for sure. So I think we're going to have a tight, tight really, really tight next downwind. And as we pointed out, if... Uh if Jury's able to hold on to this lead all the way to the finish, which is hard to do, but still possible, we've seen it before, then it's going to be a tie going into this finals, and it will be an absolute great finals because, oh, wait a minute. Wow. Now you have no rights when you tack, and until you've completed your tack. Okay, we got it. Scotty, let's This is going to be a fight all the way to the finish, Dobbs. Well, sorry, we, we missed your middle of the broadcast there, but uh, how how close was that at the top mark mark rounding? Yeah, about a boat length. It's, uh, it's going to be a battle all the way to the finish, and uh, Hardesty all over jury's air right now, so uh, holy smokes, this will be one where the teams need to study the breeze, and I, I think it'll be, uh, you know, the... The person that uh, rolls the other boat last, um, he, he who rolls last wins. Dobbs? Well, thanks very much for that, Scotty. It's going to be a, certainly a last, exciting last leg here. Hardesty digging hard, looking for every opportunity. Uh, Nikolai, what, what, what do we see here? Bill is trying to get around Laurie Dew in some way, and it's really hard to do that without spinning us. But now Bill is going to the left side of Laurie to jive back and get the starboard rise. So now Bill got the starboard rise. But if Laurie Dewey can squeeze into the finish line from that position, he's going to be strong. But if he has to do another jive, then Bill's got to start right at the next meeting. 
Seems like Bill is going for him to cover him up. I mean, Bill th saw that Laurie Duke can make all the way to the finish without problems. So Bill is going in behind him now to, to cover him and steal his win. But it seems like Laurie Duke is really strong right now and he probably got this run. Well, uh, look at Bill reaching. He's, he's reaching up here, trying to take the game to Laurie Jury and the Kiwis. Looks like the gap has closed to with almost a length, but uh, maybe too little, too late. You know, very aggressive by Hardesty as we predicted he was coming out. He's trying everything he can to suck Laurie into doing something so that he can pass him, and he almost did it. It looked, at least from our perspective, with those double jibes, trying to get a lured... Uh, Allured, uh, right, so but here we La go. Laurie, Laurie Jury, blue flag. A, cheer. a round of applause From for New the Zealand. Kiwis and Laurie Jury. They've they've done what they had to do. They've won the match. They've brought it to one point each. So, last match wins. It's a it's a grand finale here. It's going to be exciting. Stick around. What do you say? I say we couldn't have scripted this better. I mean, we have just the absolute. Best conditions for a final with these great sailors out here and for them to go best out of three, here we go. You know, we're gonna have one more race and beautiful conditions, 20 to 25 knots of breeze right off of the Navy Pier. We're live on the internet. You can watch it later. We've got uh, chicagocup.org uh, and chicagomatchrace.com and you can go online and watch these races. I think we even have some on YouTube. But uh, stand by, don't leave. They're just gonna do a, a small debrief. We're gonna roll into another one. And, and as soon as this is over, we are going to have all the skippers up here on the, the grandstand. And we're gonna have a press conference and we're gonna throw them the trophies and we're gonna interview them. And for, for Scotty Dixon out on the water, Dobbs Davis here with me, I'm Annie Gardner. We're gonna take a two minute break, save our voices for the last and final race. And Nikolai, thanks. Stand by if you wanna hang out. We'd love to have you help call this one too. Getting ready to start the last and final race in the Chicago Match Race Center's 
grade two invitational and that's seven minutes. With us, we have Will Tiller from New Zealand, one of the uh, semi-finalists that managed to come out in third place. So Will, we're, uh, have a seat. We're gonna sit here and call the race, but please don't spill your beer. Make sure you drink it. You are 21, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Just, okay. Well, I know in his country they have different rules, but uh, so Will, tell us about your last race quickly because we're gonna roll into this start real soon. Um, yeah, our last race was against uh, Taylor. Hold it right up to your mouth. Our last race was against Taylor Canfield, and uh, we uh, he was a bit quicker than us around the course, but we were lucky enough to get a penalty on them in the pre-start and kept it close. And just at the finish, we managed to squeeze in there and get the win. How hard is it to control these boats in the pre-start? Um, well, for us, we, we struggled a bit, and yeah, it was definitely quite difficult, but uh, I think these two teams out here now are definitely on the top of their game, and I think Jury's going to be tough to beat. This is his home conditions, and I hope he's going to do it, I reckon. Okay, well, you're a Kiwi, he's a Kiwi, so I'm guessing there's just a tiny bit of bias there. Um, we've got Hardesty, the American, come over on this side, you guys, if you want to give him a little cheer. All right, so we've got about one and a half minutes before they're going to enter the box. And uh, right now, what would you be thinking about, Will? Um, I'll be thinking about what we're going to do tonight, you know, <laughs> what, what's happening. I'm not trying to stay out of the race as much as possible right now. <laughs> no, not what you're thinking about. Now, if you were out there, if you were on uh, Jury's boat, what would you be thinking about? You're not thinking about tonight. Okay, well, I probably would be, but... I'd be thinking the right's favoured, let's get a windward start and just roll from there and just, just take the race out. That's right. You know, we have seen the boat that starts on the right has controlled many of the races today in these uh, windy conditions. And with starting on the port side, you're at a, a, a small disadvantage in the beginning, but we've seen Hardesty be very aggressive, super great at, at boat handling. And uh, we've got about... 30 seconds left before they enter. That's right, folks, cheer them on. There they go, working hard. One more race, working together. That's Jen Wilson right in front of him from Chicago. She is the, uh, the local here, and she's trimming Maine for Bill Hardesty. We have about 15 seconds until they enter. It's all about time and distance. As we look over there, Lori Jury just charging towards the committee boat. We've got seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one, flag up. That's four minutes. And Charlie change. That's uh, Charlie is a change flag and red flag. That means they're going to go to the red mark, which we've seen all afternoon. We've got three minutes and 45 seconds. And hey, Will, call call this uh, start for us. Okay, we've just got the uh, classic dial up, but uh, Laurie Jury's decided to peel out Hold straight away and he's heading off on port. He's trying to build some nice separation, and we'll look for him to circle back at Hardesty soon. And here he goes right now. Hardesty has to keep clear, so he's going to tack and stay right up into the wind. There he goes. And we hear umpires calling from one of the radios here. What they're doing is making sure that nobody's fouling somebody out. They can't penalize anybody unless one of the boats raises a flag, correct? Uh, that's correct. And right now they're backing up and as long as they're not doing it on, whoops, they are doing it on purpose. They're holding the sail. So they have to be very careful. Yeah, it looks like Laurie Drew's peeled out there. It's gonna, looks like he's just extending out on port and just gonna probably take it into the playground and then throw in some circles. Yep, so he's trying to extend his distance between him and Hardesty and once he gets way out to the playground as Dave Perry likes to call it and we do too. He'll turn around and come back at him and attack. There they go. Yeah, and now we're probably looking for Bill Hardesty to do another circle, and here he goes for it now. Two and a half minutes to go. Lots of time to kill. They're circling around, and when they have right away, they're not allowed to just hit the other boat. You have to uh, avoid them. But if you can hold your course when you have right away for about three seconds, right, and if the other boat can't keep clear and you have to avoid, then you do draw a foul on them. Yeah, that's correct. You're sort of just trying to gain a little advantage out of the circling, maybe close it up a little, and if you can stop your opponent from jiving or tacking, you've really got yourself into a strong position. 
And two minutes right now, two minutes to the start. And they're about, what do you think, about 50 seconds away, so they have some time to kill. Yeah, they're probably thinking about a lead-in time, though, and we might see a bit of separation from the boats. One might decide to attack, or one's going to choose to lead in soon. It's all about right now who wants to go back. They're looking at the clock. They're looking at the starting line. They're deciding when do we want to go back. Boat number six is Hardesty. They should be turning back. They want to lead back then. They're coming back now. Again, what we said, we want the right. So we're going we're gonna to look for our buddy Scotty Dixon, another Kiwi that's out there on the water. Uh, so, Scotty, uh, tell us what you see there in this pre-start. It's certainly been fast and furious. A minute, 10 to go. Yeah, a, uh, a dizzying number of circles and... Uh, only, uh, the, you know, the boats haven't been that close together. There was one uh, yell from Artisty's crew, but I think it was uh, more of one of uh, more one of intimidation rather than uh, any penalty situation. Um, but 50 seconds to go now, and it's Bill Artisty leading the charge uh, back to the starting line, and it looks like he's a little bit early. So uh, I think. Uh, Laurie Jury knows that, and he's, I think he'll be uh, content to hang high here, Dobbs. Well, thanks for that, Scotty. Uh, we're going to be listening in here, calling it into the uh, calling it into the start line. Twenty-four seconds, and uh, here, this is our clear, 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 clear. clear. Oh. That's our wing umpire telling the distance between the boats as Laurie Jury's pushing Bill Hardesty. Whoa, they're really close, Annie. They are close. And, and, hard and yellow court. flag, yellow flag. Ah. Jury pushed it a little too hard. Oh, Hardesty very close on the line, but he wasn't over. Unbelievable start. Unbelievable, Unbelievable start. That was beautiful. You know, Jury pushing a little too hard, as you said, and, and Hardesty avoiding it. But... We were looking, wondering if they were even going to make the starting line above that committee boat, but they did no, no problem at all. So penalty on jury. They're going to carry that. They're going to be very aggressive now because they want to put one on uh, Hardesty and see if they can cancel it. This is a fantastic finals in the final. Well, I, I want to throw it out to uh, Scotty Dixon. Uh, uh, Scotty, you still with us? Did you see how close it was there? Was that a, a deserved penalty by Laurie Jury? Well, uh, we're, we're pretty sure there was contact in that one, Dobbs, which uh, usually means somebody's right and somebody's wrong. And um, in this case, I think the, uh, the umpire's deciding that Laurie Jerry just uh, stuck it in, stuck his bow in there too, too late, too close, and didn't give Hardesty enough room to, uh, to keep clear. So uh, that Laurie, uh, Laurie Jerry being... Um, penalized for his uh, maybe over-aggression there, Dobbs. We'll copy that. Thanks very much, Scotty. We'll come back to you. Um, <laughs> what do you think, guys? I mean, uh, pretty good position that, that uh, Bill Hardesty's in now. He's ahead, and his opponent's got a uh, penalty. What, what are the options here for Laurie? Um, he's just got a, got a battle hard from there, and if he can get rid of Hardesty off his shoulder, he might open up a, open up a door and an opportunity to get back at him and maybe get in front and offset this penalty. How's he going to do it? Uh, let's hope he's fast and, yeah, just going to sail around Hardesty. It's pretty difficult from where he is, though. Well, another way is to slow down, right? To slow down and suck him in and, and, and create some conflict there. Try to pull it, and well, there he goes. The he's luffing up right now, forcing Hardesty to attack before he gets to the ley line. So Hardesty can't make it around the top mark. Uh, but he's tacking Whoa, right big away aggressive on move on Hardesty. Right contact, contact on the rigs. Top of the rigs have made contact. Unbelievable. Scotty Dixon, did you see that? Contact on the tops of the rigs. Aggressive move from Bill Hardesty. That was a very aggressive move by uh, Bill Hardesty there, and I'm not surprised that he gets a penalty there. But it looks like one each. Um, I think that probably should have just been one on Bill. It's quite an aggressive move going taking back so quickly. Standing by. Yeah, it's, tell us, Scotty, I'm an unbelievably aggressive move on the part of Bill Hardesty. He copped himself a penalty, but then uh, also got one from Laurie Jury. Talk us through that. 
Yeah, we, we felt Laurie Jury was a little bit hard done by that one. Uh, jury tacks on to uh, Port, and um, Hardesty then tacked on to Starboard. So I think Jury, in my, from my perspective, Jury was on Port before Hardesty was on Starboard. As soon as Hardesty was on Starboard, um, Jury uh, started to respond, and it was almost instantly the rigs hit. And then the boats hit as well, and so we felt sure that uh, Hardesty tacked too close. So we we thought he might get a uh, a red flag penalty out of that one, um, but uh, the umpires seeing it uh, a, a bit differently. They um, obviously feel that Laurie Jury didn't do enough to keep out of the way, but uh, Bill Hardesty definitely tacking too close there, Dobbs. Well, thanks for that, uh, Scotty. I'll tell you what, that illustrates uh, uh, the, the uh, value of perspectives, you know, because we're sitting here thinking there's no way that Laurie Jury had an opportunity to keep clear uh, that, that uh, you know, it happened all so fast. What do you think? That's uh, pretty much the way we saw it, and um, certainly it was uh, the second that Hardesty got on to starboard, um, Jury started to keep clear, and it was almost instantly after that that the rigs collided. So what more could he have done at that point? So, uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, our perspective, it'll be interesting to uh, to hear what the umpires say, but uh, a little hard to uh, understand how Jury could get penalised for that one after doing everything he could, and, uh, and there's still being a collision, Dobbs. Well, it just goes to show you that this is not the only sport where the spectators can make the calls uh, and have differences of opinions with the race officials. Uh, it certainly happens in football and baseball and everything else, and as well as sailing. So uh, coming into the bottom here, uh, how, how, what, what's the mood right now in uh, Laurie's boat, do you think? Um, I think you'd be feeling pretty hard done by, and that situation that Hardesty causes put you behind by a number of boat lengths and you're in a tough spot and I don't know, I'm trying to keep the mood positive on the boat is definitely difficult. They have to be patient, right? I mean, they got to wait and see if something else can happen, but it, it's hard. It's, it's tough. This has been a really long series. This is the last race out of, I don't know, maybe a hundred races that they've run over three days. And they're not out of it though. Look how close it's less than a boat length between the two boats, but Hardesty's really come on fire today. He has been sailing so well. I would say if we looked at the record of all the teams, he's probably had the best record for the day. I mean, he really has, I don't even know if he's lost a race. He's done so well. But there he goes. He's going to go a little bit further and probably tack back to cover. You know, in that instant, instant back there where they had uh, the, the rigs collide, that's, that's just amazing. That's the first time we've seen that this weekend, right, Dobbs? Uh, yeah, it certainly is, and it's a potentially quite dangerous situation. You know, if you get one of the masthead of one boat hooked under the backstay of the other, it can pull the rigs out. It's, uh, it's, it's really a bad thing, and we don't like to see that happen. We'd rather, rather have the hulls hit. Those are easily repaired. Um, and we've got the boats coming together here. I think Hardesty's still got a nice couple boat length lead. We'll probably look to see him tack and cover Laura here. Um, no, he's chose to extend. And See, like welcome to the commentator's <laughs> curse, mate. You, you're trying to predict the future, and then it doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, now we see a bit of a split coming on again, and hopefully Laurie can gain a bit of leverage out this left-hand side and get back into the Bill Hardesty. Uh, Scotty Dixon, uh, do you, are there any wind shifts out there or any opportunities for, uh, for Laurie Jury to, to bring this back to Bill Hardesty? Yeah, well, there's only half a bow length in it, Dobbs, and uh, as we saw on the first beat, Jerry, uh, whatever that boat speed mode he found in the uh, in the previous race, he, he had it again on this beat. At the moment, I would say the shift has gone Hardesty's way, um, so Hardesty taking a little bit of control, uh, but also being smart about the shifts that he's picking. Uh, the boat's coming back together again now, and to me, it's a uh, possibly a small gain to Hardesty, probably a, at least a boat length, boat length, maybe two at it now. Um, so Jury just feeding off the scraps that uh, Hardesty's leaving him, and really Hardesty uh, not not uh, dropping a whole lot on the floor here. Dobbs. 
Well, thanks for that, uh, Scotty. The, they're just about getting into the top match. Um, what do you think? Uh, what, what are the options here? Any anything to do? What what can the Kiwis get do to get back into this? Uh, sort of just pray for a miracle and hope that something breaks on Hardesty's boat, really, or a big shift. I'm I'm not sure. Ahead, but Jury's definitely closed right up. Uh, only half a boat length in it now. Um, nice rounding by Bill Hardesty. Uh, that tack around the mark costing Jury a little more time. Two boat lengths to go. Uh, I think Jury has to be patient. Just stay on Hardesty's breeze and uh, close up, get alongside him uh, to uh, create some uh, penalty opportunity, Dobbs. Well, thanks very much for that, Scotty. We'll come back to you. What do you think? Well, you know, Nikolai was talking about without the spinnaker, if you can go right behind the other boat and you take their breeze with the main, it's it's even easier to overtake them. But what we just saw Jury do was drive away from them. So I was a bit surprised to see that. The only reason you would do that is if you saw some better pressure over here towards the pier and he wanted to get that. And we've seen that happen being only 50 yards away from each other, 20 yards away from each other, somebody get a nice puff of wind with just the mainsail and jib alone and go squirting by. We saw Hardesty almost catch somebody with, uh, by a half a boat length, they, they lost a race when they'd been two boat lengths behind at the top mark. So it's not over. We are still having a drag race here to the finish, but uh, just looking out there, you know, the, the boat with the bright colors on it, that's Hardesty's team from the USA. They have really good speed. Jury might have a tad bit right more than right now, but I don't see any lead changing. And this is it, you guys. For those of you that have been watching, our faithful fans out here on the Navy Pier, we're coming to the last race of a three-day event. And in the finish, it is Hardesty still in the lead. So just a few lengths left in it. It looks like the USA is going to get this. Their uh, Kiwis are trying one last ditch effort. They are to windward, but charging into the finish, Bill Hardesty and his team from the USA, Jen That's Wilson, it. Mandy Markey, Tyler Rice, Ben Bardwell have taken the grade two invitational here in Chicago. What an awesome Awesome, awesome display of match race sailing. And congratulations for their runner-up performance from New Zealand, Laurie Jury, Matt Stevens, Logan Fraser, and Mike Edmonds. Awesome job, all these teams. I think they're gonna come by for a flyby. So as they do, give them a big round of applause and a cheer. I hope they come by for a flyby. You know, Jury and Hardesty, if you can hear us, please sail by the by the stands here, by the Navy Pier, we'd love to uh, to have you come by and your fans are here to say hi. Sorry, mate, Will, I know that you were rooting for your hometown guys, J Lori Jury, but uh, you guys did really, really well with a third place. Here he comes, let's give him a big cheer, you guys. It takes five people, five people to sail this boat. They're psyched. They Bill won. Hardesty, Jen Wilson, Mandy Markey, Tyler Rice, Mixed Ben crew. Bardwell. The, these are our grade two invitational winners from the USA. Fantastic. Mixed crew. I love that fact, too, because, you know, this is a sport where men and women can compete alongside each other or against each other. We had an all-female crew out here as well. They didn't make the semis, but they did really, really well today. I think actually this was Anna's best day with her team. But Hardesty just coming off a world championship in San Diego, the Etchells Worlds against 83 boats of similar size. Now he comes from behind. Today he was not in the lead coming into this. And he's come from behind and he's just done a fabulous job taking the honors. That qualifies him for next month's event, which will be up in Belmont, also sponsored by the Chicago Match Race Center. And there's $65,000 at stake there. Dobbs. That's right. Bill Hardesty and his team have won the right to an invitation to come back here in, in uh, a month and a half at the end of September for the grade one uh, event, the Chicago Cup. 
So match race sailing will come again here to Navy Pier. Our next step in the program, stand by. All right, so uh, okay, okay. we're going to have a, a fantastic flyby. Don't go away. Both teams are going to come by flying spinnakers, something we haven't seen since early this morning. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, they, get your cameras. <laughs> get your cameras. They're going to come smoking by here in the Tom 28s. This is just going to be an awesome lap. So, uh, so stick around. Uh, the teams will come around here for a flyby, and we'll congratulate them once again. And not only that, we're going to have a press conference immediately following the flyby. They're going to come in, dock their boats. We'll do a press conference and an awards ceremony right up there by the huge anchor, and there's a table. Their names will be in front of them. You'll be able to take photos of the flyby and of the, all the skippers and of the trophy presentation. So for Scotty Dixon out on the water, our infield reporter, for Dobbs Davis, myself, Annie Gardner, for, <laughs> for Will Tiller over here that's been helping us out, thank you. And we'll see you up at the press conference very shortly. Stay tuned. One, two. All right, One, as two. we come back, get your cameras ready. Blowing 20 to 25 knots here with Spinnaker. That's Lori Jury from New Zealand on boat number four. And I said four, but I meant two. I've only been talking for three days nonstop, so. This mic, I think, is louder and might project your voice better. Okay, let's give him a hand. Lori Jury from New Zealand with Matt Stevens on the main, Logan Fraser on the jib, and Mike Edmonds on the spinnaker on the bow. Spinnaker coming down. Oh. Rock and roll. There they go. No pole, you guys. They have no pole to hold it steady. And watch. <laughs> and they're going to jive without a pole. That's really, really great crew work. They've got tweakers on, though, to hold this, the, the windward side down. And they're going to go around the corner, take the spinnaker down. Over here with the yellow spinnaker, that's hard to see. They're going to head up so they can come closer to us. Hardesty's crew from San Diego, California, USA, with Jen Wilson from Chicago on the main, Mandy Marquis in the pit, Tyler Rice on the bow in the spinnaker, and Ben Bardwell on the bow. Give them a big hand. Here they go. Nice job, Bill and crew. Woohoo! All right, so. 
go on over to the area where the uh, press conference is. We're going to grab all the skippers and we'll be up there very, very shortly with an awards presentation. Scotty's going to run the awards. Yeah. Just the four. There's only got four people up there. Okay. I just ran through with him uh, what everything we need. So we're okay, just going to have. So them. I don't even need to do anything. Yep. Yeah, we're all set. Oh. Help me just feed this out. Of course. 